Hello first graders, Mrs. Primusberger here. Um, today we're going to need to get out our treasure book for reading, so make sure you go grab your treasure book. It was sent home with all of our goodies that you, your moms and dads or you came and got that were on top of your locker. Um, then, once you have it, if you need a minute, you can pause the video and go grab it. Once you have it, we're going to open up. And remember, we've been talking a little bit about the table of contents. So if we look in our book, this is the table of contents. We're actually on Unit 5, Week 2. Last week we read Kitten's First Full Moon. Um, we're going to read Meet Ben Franklin. It's a biography, which is, means that it is a nonfiction story, a real story about a real person, Ben Franklin. And if we look over here, we look, and it is on page 56. So can you all open up your book to page 56 for me? I'm going to do the same. Now, since we're becoming such great readers, it is one of our longest stories we've ever had to read. It actually has three chapters in it. So with I'm going to read, and I want you to follow along with me. Um, in between each chapter, I'll we can maybe stand up and get some wiggles out, okay? So looking over here, we're going to read Meet Ben Franklin. Um, the genre is the type of book. We talked about that. It's actually a story about a true it's a true story of a person's life. Also, we're not going to get into it today, but we are going to be um, talking about making inferences. And then what we're going to be, while you're listening and reading along or following along with me, we're going to read to find out what makes Ben Franklin a great American. What does he do that makes him so awesome? Okay, so we're going to read Meet Ben Franklin by Philip Dre. It's illustrated by John Kensler. Chapter 1. Ben, Ben, his friends called. Here I am, said Ben Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. Ben was sitting on the docks. He was looking at the big ships. He liked the way the wind field filled the sails. Ben Franklin lived long ago. He liked to do many things. He liked to read. He was good at telling jokes and playing games. Ben was a curious boy. He was smart too. He liked to dream and he liked to make things. One day, Ben made a red kite. This kite will be like the sails on the big ships, Ben said. So we have the yellow words are our sight words or our vocab words. So we have the word curious. If he was curious, that probably means he, he was kind of wondering what things were like. The next time Ben was swimming, he had his kite with him. What will you do with that? His friends asked. You will see, said Ben. Ben ran with the kite. The wind lifted it. He jumped in the water. He started to go fast. The kite was pulling him. Look at Ben go, said his friends. How did Ben think of that? They asked. All right, chapter two. So let's stand up and let's get a little bit of wiggles up before we start chapter two. And let's do 10 jumping jacks. Can you do 10 jumping jacks for me? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, you guys rock. Here we go. Let's get our fingers ready to follow along. Remember those yellow words are sight words or vocab words for the week. Chapter two. Time went by. Ben grew up. He still liked to dream. He still liked to make things. He made a new kind of stove. This stove was little, but it gave off lots of heat. Ben made an Ben made a new kind of glasses that helped people to see up close and far away. How did Ben think of that? People asked. When Ben lived, people did not know much about electricity. Ben was curious about it. He knew it could make sparks. He sometimes saw the sparks when he put his key into a lock. One day, it was raining. Ben looked at a flash of lightning. 
It looked like a big spark. He wanted to know if the flash was electricity. There he is being curious again and wondering. All right, chapter three. Should we get up and again, get some wiggles out and see what he's gonna do next? All right, everybody stand up. This time we're gonna do five lunges. So when we do lunges, and we've done this with our fitness, fitness sight words, so we should be good at it. Let's do five lunges across the room. One, two, three, four, five. All right, awesome. Let's get to chapter three and see what Ben Franklin's going to do next. Here we go. Let's follow along on page 68. Chapter three. How can I find out if lightning is electricity? Ben asked. I cannot go up in the sky. Ben had an idea. An idea is a thought that was in his head. A kite had helped him long ago. A kite could help him again. I cannot get up there, he said, but a kite can. The next time it looked like rain, Ben went out. The sky was dark. Ben had a kite and an iron key. He sent the kite up. Lightning flashed. Ben felt the kite string shake. He saw sparks of electricity jump off the key. This shows that, electri that lightning is electricity, said Ben. Ben had an idea. He knew that if lightning struck a house, it could catch on fire. He put an iron rod on top of his house. Lightning will strike the iron rod, but not my house, Ben said. The rod will keep my house safe. Ben's friends put up iron, iron rods too. Today we will put them on our houses so they will be safe. Ben was glad that the lightning rods helped people in his life. Ben Franklin would do many more things to help people. He had more things to dream about and more things to make. And here's our author, Philip, and he says, I write books about Americans who do, who do brave things to make our country better. I wanted to tell the story of Ben Franklin and his kite because he had the courage to try something no one had ever done before. The purpose of the story, the author's purpose, he wanted to write a true story about Ben Franklin and his new ideas. Uh, so we'll get more into inferences. And um, you can talk with your parents or with someone and tell and think about why was Benjamin Franklin such an important person to America. Thanks for listening.